is that um, I have seen, because I'm currently working, I'm currently working with individuals and in groups, is uh, in dance movement therapy. I think about the work we do every day, and I think about it in my groups and with my individuals. And what's been amazing for me is how applicable all the reading and all the ideas and kind of just a broader conceptualization of what psychology is and what it means to kind of walk with people, not do anything to them or help them or anything, just kind of walk with people towards help. And it's also, you know, quite frankly, the dialogue we have together as people working in different ways in different settings, the support we give to each other's ideas, um, the dialogue we have. Um, you know, a lot of times you guys will say something and I'll be like, yes, you know. Um, so it really comes from the cohort as a supportive unit and as a um, co-creation, mm -hmm. you know, that we're creating. Ah. What do you think about that? <laughs> coming into this program last year, I had a sense of coming home, being with people who were like me, and not exactly like me, but people with whom I could be myself completely. And that's definitely grown mm -hmm. over the last year. Um, as far as, as the work is concerned and how it's affected the work that I am already doing. I'm a teacher, and I've been able to bring my experience and my learning to my students. I teach at a junior college. I teach psychology, and I teach in a drug and alcohol certificate program, and I also teach, uh, I teach traditional students, and I teach in a men's prison. So I've taken that ability to bring my whole self here in this program and been able to apply it to bringing my whole self and love, compassion, care, um, purpose, meaning, even into a prison, and uh, loving them and helping them to heal where they are, giving them a few hours a week of the kind of openness and care and freedom that I experience being in this program. The program has pushed me, and I've struggled, and it's been difficult because it's been so challenging. Um, and I've, I've learned how strong I am. I've also learned that I can be a voice for other people in the program, and that through that voice, I'm, I'm listened to and respected, and I, I have the ability to help this program change and grow, and that each of us has the ability to help this program it doesn't feel like a bunch of individuals trying to achieve degrees and have the most lucrative careers possible. Mm -hmm. It is about a community of people coming together and forming a, this collective, powerful movement toward changing healing, toward changing how we look at ourselves and at the world and what we can potentially do. Mm -hmm. So this has yeah. given me... I agree. It's like much bigger than like getting the degree. It's become much bigger than that. Yeah, it's way bigger. And, and it has felt that way since the beginning. That is a much better, bigger thing than just, you know, why are you here and what are you doing? Mm -hmm. that, that mission has been clear and well articulated and felt mm -hmm. and experienced and it has grown. By coming into this program, I now feel more validated as a professional in this field mm -hmm. rather than invalidated as the odd one out in yeah. the previous program that I was in where you know, we don't talk about spirituality, we only talk about quantitative methods. Mm -hmm. Qualitative methods are you know, frowned upon, misunderstood, not used. Um, the idea that lived experience is key, it's core. It's what we're all about is our lived experience. So mm -hmm. let's bring that together with our scientific understanding and knowledge. Uh, there doesn't have to be such a conflict between the two. It's our lived experience that gave us our science. Oops. Mm -hmm. so. I'll pass. Mm -hmm.
Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, when I was first looking at the program here, I was had come from a background where I was in a spiritual understanding, and that all of my professors, or maybe I could call them professors, they're all mentors, who had been in school 35, 40 years ago. And when I said I was looking at a PhD program, I was very excited about it, they were sort of horrified, you know, like, why? Why would you go into a PhD program with this spiritual understanding? I mean, what would, why, you know, what, what are you thinking? You know, I think a lot of people feel that you can't grasp something spiritual through an intellectual uh, vehicle. And uh, yeah, I agree with that, uh, which is one of the reasons why I chose this program. Because when I looked at the other programs, there was no space for any other kind of understanding. Mm -hmm. You know, other programs required a, a, an intellectual application, and, and that was it. You know, without a, an experiential component, and without a real appreciation for well-being and health and vitality and potential, human potential, uh, which really defines this program very differently than other PhD programs. Having said that, then I also looked at PhD programs that were transformative programs, that were spiritual programs, and they didn't have rigor. They didn't have requirements that I would have to take certain things in order to improve my scholarly writing or understand quality or quantitative methods. Or, mm -hmm. you know, they didn't have uh, really any demand for uh, clear articulation of what I was about, and where, what direction I wanted to go, and what I wanted to do with that. Um, and, and so immediately became evident to me when I found this program that this program was uniquely placed because it has both the component of we have this human capacity and this human potential and this academic rigor that is really required if you want to do work on a PhD level or if you want to do research, you want to publish, you need to have some understanding of that skill set in that field. So, so I think this program is really, truly unique. You know, there are very few of anything like it because of that. And, um, and I think that, in particular, the leader of the program, Glenn, you know, has a vision for a movement that then feeds the whole program so that we go from being individuals entering a program with our individual ideas to being a community of people as better part of a movement. And honestly, who would not want to sign up for that? And, and this other thing that you talked about, Judith, um, there is something, I, I had a colleague say to me recently, she said, you know, I thought it was crazy. Like, you're going for your master's, your PhD, you have kids, you're working. You know, like, I could not stop, like, the list of things that I do beyond, beyond this PhD program. I'm also a, a volunteer mediator, teach co-parenting classes, I'm about to volunteer in the prison. And so I have all these other things going on. And she's like, it's crazy. Like, why would you do it? She said, but now that I've seen you do it, your teaching is better, you're clearer, mm -hmm. you get across to people better, you, uh. you listen better, you're more connected. Mm -hmm. She said, I can see all of the benefits that I couldn't have seen you know, happening in real time here. Mm -hmm. And so that's really what I think I would encourage people to consider if, if people are coming from my field. You know, I would say to them, consider that you can have your spiritual truth and you can live in this human experience. And you can do both. They're not, a li they're not limited from each other. Um, and it feeds each other. They actually are designed to work together. Imagine mm -hmm. that. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yes to all of that. <laughs> um, I wanted to touch on something that you had mentioned. I think everybody actually has. Um, I came from a clinical psychology program. Mm -hmm. And I was always wondering, where's the heart? And where are the feelings and where's the process? Like where when are we gonna talk about these things? And we never did. Mm -hmm. And for under my bachelor's program I was extremely disappointed because that was never even brought up. Um, and I kept thinking What happened to psychology? <laughs> <laughs> I don't get Absolutely. it. <laughs> and so thinking is if do I want to become a counselor if this is all we're teaching? And then luckily I found, you know, this program after my master's program that helps to bridge that gap and it brings both together. And it's, if you're gonna be working with people, you have to incorporate the body and the mind. It's essential. Like there's no other way of actually saying you're treating a person without incorporating both of those things. So this program for me definitely has highlighted that aspect and also has made me a lot more confident as a counselor. Mm -hmm. 
I'm able to be rigorous and, you know, really study and write these amazing papers mm -hmm. and see my writing increase like tenfold each semester. Mm -hmm. And I feel now more than ever that I am going to be an amazing contributor to this field because of this knowledge I'm getting, because of all of these professors, because of all the ranges of um, interests that all of us have that make me question things that I'm interested in that I hadn't even thought of before. Mm -hmm. So I feel like w instead of just one person working on this degree that I, we're all working on it together, mm -hmm. which is amazing because every time I talk with someone, it informs something else, whether it's something I've been interested in or I had questions about or something that I'm like, wow, that could be something I really want to study. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it's a really great collaborative effort.